Hello class, my name is Mary Salvaggio and today my group and I will be going over herpes and the hep B virus. I will start us out with the herpes virus. The family herpes viridae contains a large group of viruses. They have an envelope polyhedral capsid, which you can see in this picture right over here, that contains a linear double-stranded DNA genome. When the virus attaches itself to a host cell, it attaches to the cell's receptor and enters the cell through fusion of its envelope with the host cell's cytoplasmic membrane. Once inside, the viral genome is replicated and assembles in the cell's nucleus. The viron then acquires an envelope from the nuclear membrane and exits the cell through cell lysis or exocytosis. The herpes virus has three prevalent types, herpes simplex, varicella foster, and Epstein-Barr. Just these three affect over 90% of the adult population. There are several others that affect over 50% of the population. Herpes is often a latent virus, which means that it may remain inactive inside infected cells, often for many years. However, they may reactivate as a result of a number of factors, including aging, chemotherapy, immunosuppressants, and even physical or emotional stress. The virus is assigned specific species names combining HHV, which stands for human herpes virus. There are eight different species of herpes viridae within specific types. I've put up here the eight just so you can see what they cause, like herpes 3 causes chicken pox and shingles, but we will only be going over herpes 1 and herpes 2. There are multiple lesion sites in herpes 1 and 2. This picture is from your book. It's on page 500 if you'd like to get a closer look. But the sites include hands, genitals, oral cavities, and eyes. The cytolate latency is also in the nerve ganglia. So there are quite a few types of herpes one and two. Historically, the rule was herpes one was above the waist, herpes two was below the waist. But scientists uh, have discovered that that's not necessarily true. The types include oral herpes, genital herpes, ocular herpes, Whitlow, and neonatal herpes. Now Sonia will come up and discuss each one in detail as well as discuss preventative measures. Hello class, my name is Sonia Miles and I will be going over the characteristics and categories of herpes. The first category is oral herpes. Oral herpes is a human herpes virus or also known as herpes 1. It was the first human herpes virus to be discovered. About two weeks after infection, the viron of herpes 1 produced painful, itchy skin blisters on the lips, and they're also called fever blisters or cold sores. They're aligned around the lip, in the inner lip, and on the outside of the lip. These cold sores tend to last about 7 to 10 days. Initial infection is accompanied by flu-like symptoms. These include fatigue, fever, muscle pain. Sometimes these lesions can extend into the oral cavity. This is more common in younger patients with sore throat. And also common in patients with lower immune functions due to disease, chemotherapy, or radiation treatment. Genital herpes. Genital herpes, or also known as herpes 2, is known to involve, as Mary said, the waist below. So that would be your genitalia, the penis, and the, vag the vaginal area. Herpes 1 can infect the genitalia, and this causes herpes 2. The virus causes 15% of genital herpes lesions. The difference between herpes 2 and herpes 1 is primarily the location and mode of transmission. 
Herpes 2 is associated with painful lesions as well, but on the genitalia because of the virons are sexually transmitted. About 10% of cold sores result from herpes 2. The presence of herpes 2 in the oral region and herpes 1 in the genital area is presumed to be the result of oral sex. Next slide is ocular herpes. This herpes infection is caused by latent herpes virus. This form of herpes involves the eye. Symptoms and signs usually occur in only one eye and include a gritty feeling, conjunctivitis pain, and sensitivity to light. They also cause lesions on the coronal and reoccurring infections lead to blindness. Next is Whitlow. Whitlow is an inflamed blister caused by herpes 1 or herpes 2 entering a cut or a break in the skin of the finger. This is the nail bed, nail bed and this is the infection of the blister. This is a hazard to children who suck their thumb, health work, healthcare workers such as dentists and OBGYNs. For cautionary measures, healthcare workers should always wear gloves when treating patients with herpes lesions. The virus involved in Whitlow can become latent and reoccurrent. Lastly, the needle natal herpes. This Herpes is herpes 2 infection in newborns. They can tend to be life-threatening. Mortality rate of 30% is cutaneous or oral, and 80% if the central nervous system is infected. A fetus can be infected in the uterus if the virus crosses the placenta burial. Babies are mostly infected at birth due to coming in contact with lesions from the pregnant mother. Herpes 1 and 2 can occur worldwide and is transmitted through close contact of body contact. Herpes 1 is typically occur via casual contact during childhood. Herpes 2 is typically, typically inquired between the age of 15 and 29 and is the most common STD in the U.S. Herpes 1 and 2 can be diagnosed by the presence of lesions or a positive diagnosis by testing the shown presence of viral antigens. Treatments can be controlled by chemotherapeutic agents and routine applications of drugs during the duration of lesions. Prevention, it can be prevented by wearing gloves, sexual abstinence, and faithful monogamy between uninfected partners. And that concludes the section of herpes, and Kenya will discuss hepatitis B. Hi, my name is Kenya and I'm going to be talking about Hepatitis B. The virus of the family of Hypno-Abnovirides are enveloped DNA with capsules that invades and replicates in the liver cells. Hypnovirus is unique in that it is partially double-strand DNA and partially single-strand DNA. HBV replicates through an RNA during replication, one strand of DNA the hepatitis B virus is transcript into RNA by an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Hepatitis is an inflammatory condition of the liver. The liver has many functions, making blood clots factors, storing sugar and other nutrients, assisting in digestion of the lipids and removing waste from the blood. Jaundice is the yellowing of the eyes 
yellowing of the skin and the eyes occurring when a greenish yellow waste product called bilirubin accumulates in the blood. Hematitis is an characterized by enlargement of the liver, abnormal distress, and bleeding into the skin and inter internal organs. HBV is transmitted when infected body fluids, particularly blood, comes in contact with breaking in skin mucous membrane. Many infected in individuals are asymptomatic, asymptomatic and most manifest only mild jaundice, low grade fevers, several liver damages is most likely to result from such asymptomatic chronic infections after 20 to 40. Hepatitis B involves the laboring antibodies to detect the virus antigens. Releases from the HBV infected cell. Treatments. Effective treatment of for hepatitis B is alpha interference and intachio barrier. Liver transplants is most is the only treatment for end stage chronic hepatitis B. Prevention. Preventing prevention is possible because an effective virus vaccine is available. Three doses of HBV vaccine results in protecting against the virus in 95% of the individuals. To prevent the spread of to prevent the spread of HBV, special care should be taken with needles and other sharp instruments, especially in healthcare settings. That's it.